Welcome to St. Joseph Radio Presents. We're here again with Deacon Tom Burke, and we're talking about bringing the love of Jesus Christ in every encounter we have, just, just to our friends. And we're talking about how our hearts are changed by being so connected to Jesus and listening to his voice. And you may not feel like you can hear his voice. Today, you're going to hear how to hear his voice, what we do to hear his voice, and the wonderful thing of walking with him as disciples. you got to stay. It'll be good. Here we go. Welcome to the St. Joseph Radio Presents live program broadcasting to you from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. The program that for over 30 years has brought you eloquent speakers from across the globe to help explain, clarify, and evangelize the Catholic faith. Our program covers a variety of topics relating to current issues and occurrences in our daily lives. Now, with the aid of technology, we are able to bring the gospel message to the four corners of the world, where Christ himself did say, those who have ears ought to hear. It is our hope at St. Joseph Radio that through these programs, we can help evangelize the world and change one soul at a time. Now, here is your host to introduce today's guest and topic. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I am your host today, Peter Grutz, and we are here at St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I am privileged and honored to be with Deacon Tom Burke today again. Deacon, welcome. Oh, Peter, it's so great to be with you. It's almost like I'm beside myself. That would be more than me that I can, <laughs> than I can handle, but thank you so much for having me in. Well, we're thrilled to have you here, and let me just tell you the name of our program today is Bringing the Love of Jesus Christ. That's a little deeper than it sounds. I know it sounds like we've said this before. We live it, hopefully, Bringing the Love of Jesus Christ, but uh, I think uh, I think we want to make it a bit more personal. We really do. We want to make it very, very personal. Um, and And who do we bring the love of Jesus Christ to? Everyone. How do we know how to do it? Let's look to see how Jesus did it. He didn't do it the same way every single time. So, Deacon, uh, would, would you mind, uh, but before you say this, before I ask you to pray, let me just tell you this. Every time you're here, I feel like I had an hour of spiritual direction. You, you challenge me more than anybody else uh, with the questions you ask and the way you make me think. So I'll, I'll just say to my listeners, hey, I'm, I'm in the same boat you are. <laughs> we, are we are being challenged spiritually by Deacon, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm challenged too. <laughs> In all honesty, with everything that we come up and we talk to, it causes me to say, Lord, where were you in this? Yeah. So let's go ahead and pray. Please. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, good and gracious God, at this time, even, even more than other times, we, we appreciate the great love you have for each one of us. And whatever trial and tribulation or, or hardship or challenge we have, we know that our Lord Jesus Christ is risen. We know that he rose from the dead after his passion for us, his passionate love for you. Fill us with that same spirit of passion for you, God our Father. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing. Jesus promised when two or three are gathered in his name, then he is here. So we bring our, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into this conversation, into our world, and we ask all this in his name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Deacon, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a flawed man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man after my namesake, Peter. I want to do the right thing, and sometimes I'm just misdirected. And one, one time, um, I flew halfway across the country to go physically accost somebody because he needed it. And uh, I, I was, because it, the reasoning was done, the... The logic was over, and I thought this guy was just plain going to get away with something that he shouldn't get away with, and was hurting a lot of people. Okay, doesn't sound very good. So, but what what I what I did is I was having a hard time meeting up with him, and um, but I still had to say my rosary. Right, I hadn't said my rosary yet, so I I picked the place that was closest, the church, and I went in, and and, and I couldn't go in because the doors were locked. But that hasn't stopped me before I looked around. There was a side door. So I went into the side door. There was a lot of construction going on. And I went down, I kneeled down, and I'm saying my rosary. And a voice, I heard a voice, and it said, are you here for the penance service? And I jumped out of my skin. I didn't know what was it. Some regular guy walking in, and I, I figured I better say yes, because I just kind of walked into a locked church. I said, yes, yes, I am. And it turned out it was the parish priest 
and there were two, maybe one or two people out there. We, we had a penance service for two. And then, what's a penance service? You, you go to confession. I wasn't planning on going to confession that day. And my passions, if you will, were up. I am mad, to say the least. I am angry. I am ticked off. And, uh, of course, what did I tell him? I tell him about why I'm here and what I'm going to do. And, um, and I, I, I'm just betting, I'm interrupting here, but I'm betting he didn't hand you a pair of bla- or brass knuckles. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. So at the end, he says, for your penance, you will bring the love of Jesus Christ to this man. And I said, I, honestly, I said, Father, could I please have something else? He said, no. For your penance, you will bring the love of Jesus Christ to this man. To this day, I wish I had given him something else. But I did what that priest asked me to do. And, and ever since, I, I've said, I, I know that in every, every encounter we have, we need to bring the love of Jesus Christ. We, we really do. In terms of wrath and punishment, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let our Lord do that. He can, he can take care of that. And, he, and he's so forgiving. <laughs> He'll do whatever is best. But it told me, whether we are meeting with friends, with our business associates, with, with strangers, isn't that our main calling? I, I, really, Deacon, is, isn't that what we are really supposed to do first and foremost? Well, I love what you're talking about, Peter, because you're talking about two things. Let me back up a little bit and kind of play this out like it was a movie in front of us, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got the knight in shining armor, and he's got his sword drawn. He's going to go right a wrong, and it's his job to right a wrong, and he's going to feel better about righting a wrong. And if he doesn't right a wrong, at least a wrong will know he's wrong. Right. And that, that, that happens That's a lot right. in our world. Yeah. And, and we, of course, with the Internet, we have a chance to, to right all kinds of wrongs and wrong all kinds of rights. Yeah. But having said that, I look at this and I go, wow, what a passionate guy. What a passionate guy for Christ. And then, he, and then, and then the Lord drew you to that penance service. Let's don't kid ourselves. You, were, you, you had no interest in hearing any other voice other than, here's my mission, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make somebody pay for what they've done, and hopefully they'll think about doing it again. And, and yet the Lord said, well, no, I'm, I'm going to change your heart first. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm going to change your heart first and then let you go change somebody else's heart. So you listened to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you're open to it, which I think is is one of the main challenges we all have all the time. I, I, I in all honesty, sometimes I'm like St. Paul. I, I do the things I don't want to do. Remember he said that? I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I want to do. And he's an apostle. So I, I don't give myself a pass. I just know that we're we're all like Peter in those ways. So so it's wonderful to listen to you, to listen to the fact that you were you were open to be led into into a, a, a quiet place that you thought would strengthen you in a different way, and then all of a sudden, God says, aha, you gave me a little bit of a gift of your time, and now I'm going to let you hear my voice through this priest. And, and, and you said, you know, you're talking about bringing love in the world. That's great. So what do we do? Huh. How, how, how do we bring that love into the world? Well, what did you do? You listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. You listen to Jesus Christ. You decided to work on yourself first, which is your penance, and then you're going to reconciliation. You were reconciled to God, and in that reconciliation, it wasn't so hard not to do what you wanted to do. That's what I heard. Yeah, it, well, you know, I— So, it, so it let's was... finish it. Did you go cold cock the guy? No. Okay. I assumed as much, but you didn't quite finish that, and I want to make sure nobody. No, was I went. I did. I did find him. I did meet with him, and I. I tried to do what, what, what the priest said. And and, and and if if it didn't change him, which you probably couldn't tell right then. I don't think it ever changed him. But did you know, it the, change you? Yes, I mean to this day it has changed me, and uh, I I can't change anybody else but me, and uh, so what what good has it done? I I still see this guy profiting from his bad behavior. But, but God's in charge of him. I'm not. But I, 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 God, God told me, in, in a way I, I couldn't have predicted, what I needed to do. And what do I do now? Now I, I've, I've kind of dropped it down to every encounter I have with everybody. I, I think you said the word open. 
Our Lord respects us so much. If we have our hearts closed to listening to him, if we have our hearts closed to acting on on his promptings, if if we say we're going to ignore the the grace of the Holy Spirit, he'll respect our opinion, but he doesn't leave us. He's with us. I had terrible intentions. God was there the whole time. He was going to try. You know, he's the, the hound of heaven. He's going to be, he's after us. Whether we are on the right path or not, he's after us, especially maybe if we're on the wrong path, he's after us. He wants us. He loves us. He desires us. He'll do anything for us. Well, I, yeah, I, I love that, but I want to back up to something you just said. And, and it's kind of a popular thing in our culture, and it is, it is, um, I can't change anybody else but myself. Did I hear that correctly yeah. from you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And so, and so we've all we've talked off air before, and I, and, and I love you dearly. So I've said to you before, let there be no lies between us. Right. And I have to tell you that that is a big, fat lie. You have so much power and authority in Jesus Christ to change the hearts of many people. And even though that one person didn't get changed, all I know you well enough to know that after that date, whenever that incident occurred where you flew across the country, after that, you were changed and you continued to change people's lives. Do not cut, please, please, anybody listen to this, do not do not diminish your worth to God. Do not diminish your ability to, to, to be out there. Do not diminish the voice calling you to be a disciple of Christ because you can change a lot. The devil says, sit back, just, just be a spectator, do not get into the fray, and God is going to show me at my uh, particular judgment all the times when I sat on my hands and praise be to God his mercy will be big enough to take care of me on that but the fact of the matter is you have so much power that you never use so let's activate it. Deacon you said it you said it well thank thank you for saying that and and uh, it, it didn't I wasn't trying to have false humility I think we're all called to uh to to uh to act the results will be in God's hands, but we, but we are called to act. Uh, I, I had my hair cut on, uh, on Friday afternoon, and, uh, and, and it's a new barber right by my office. I don't, I don't want to wait, and I don't want to, I'm impatient, and I want it to be close by. And, I, and it's, a, he's a, it's a, a black man, and we're talking about this, that, and the other thing. And for whatever reason, I said, are you a man of faith? And I got to tell you, the whole, the, whole, the whole encounter changed. We, we, we talk about faith for the rest of the time. No, let, me take, let me take that back. He talked about faith the rest of the time. He said, I am a Catholic. I grew up a Catholic. I've fallen away and doing this and that. I, I, I think, how are we supposed to bring the love of Jesus Christ to people? Simple, simple ways. Simple ways. Bring it up. Make the sign of the cross. Uh, talk to your barber who you don't know and just say, are, are you a man of faith? I think we're called to do it, and will it make a difference? I think it will. Well, let me Maybe. say this. All the times that you were willing and to take a risk, then what we do is we're recognized by God. You see, when we take a risk, you, t- you might, looking back on it that day, depending on your personality, you might have thought it was a big risk, or you might have thought it was a, a small risk. Whatever risk you take to 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 speak Jesus into the world will be rewarded, maybe not immediately. Uh, you know, we've seen things where where people have gone out of their way to show the love of Christ. You started talking about to show the love of Christ, to sit there and say to themselves, "How can love best be served?" If if that was if that was my motto, then I would say, well. God is love, so how can God best be served? But how can love best be served? How can somebody else best be served? And if you do it from the standpoint of, I got to see an immediate result, Mm. then you have gone ahead and given up one of the main gifts you will ever receive and underappreciated, and I'm going to give you a quiz. What is that gift that we received at Easter? Salvation uh, from our Lord. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what would your life be different, Peter? Yeah. If your if your life was, uh, I, I, and, and again, this isn't isn't your reconciliation, and you could tell me your sins, but I couldn't. It was all anyway. <laughs> a deacon can't do that. But you know, 
if you had sat back before you got on that plane, flew halfway across the country to make a, to make a wrong a right, or to make somebody who is wrong know they're wrong, and you thought back and you sat back and said, how can love best be served? Or if you sat back and said, I'm an eternal son of the Most High God. What does he want me to do? Because I'm going to be with God for eternity. You see, that's what ga Jesus gave us at Easter. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, it, uh, and, uh, just to be honest, it, in those moments, that wouldn't have even crossed my mind, but God is acting on us. And, and, and that's the point. God meets us where we're at. God meets us where we're at. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I'm your host, Peter Karutz. I'm here with Deacon Tom Burke. We're talking about bringing the love of Jesus Christ to everyone we meet, everyone we meet. Now, our Lord did it, right? Our, our Lord didn't say, hey, I'm going to wait until all of you folks shape up and clean up and be real good, and then we'll, we'll chat, we'll be friends. He met people where they were at in different, different, different ways. Um, I, I, I really love the story of the rich young ruler who uh, came to, to Jesus and said, good rabbi, what do I need to do to attain eternal life? And, and our Lord says, first off, he met him where he's at because he knew what that man was saying. He said, why do you call me good? Don't you know that only God is good? So what did this young, rich young ruler, he, he professed if his, if his faith that Jesus actually was God, met him where he was at. And then he asked them, uh, he told them that, you know, be obedient, what, right? Follow the Ten Commandments. So he's meeting him where he's at. He's meeting him where he's at. And, and he doesn't only meet one person, he meets so many. When the woman was caught in adultery, we don't know where the man was, right? What did our Lord do? He didn't do a thing. He sat there, and with his finger, he wrote in the sand, in the dirt so god's finger was writing what was he writing i don't know maybe the last time i remember god's finger writing something was with moses and the 10 commandments maybe he was writing the 10 commandments some people say he was writing the peop the names of those men and whatnot i don't know but is isn't that interesting the people wanted him to deal with this woman. And who did he do? What did he do? He met those people who were accusing her where they were at. I, I do want to bring up one point that, 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 that I think that it's too bad. I know it's been that way in my life earlier on and, and, and in the middle of my life. But, but, but I, thought, I thought if God wanted me to do something— yeah. He was going to have to take everything else away from me and force me to just look down one path. In other words, I saw myself as, God, I really want you to be, I really want you to treat me like St. Paul. Mm. When I'm minding my own business, I want you to strike me blind so I can't do anything else. And then I want you to lead me where I'm not so sure I'm going and then eventually reveal to me what I'm supposed to do. And, and, there's so many people I know that, that think to themselves, well, since I haven't been struck blind, and of course we talk about St. Paul being knocked off his horse, there's no evidence he was on a horse, but having said that, we expect God to knock us off our horse, and if he's not calling us that way, or calling us like he said to Moses, 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 take off your shoes, come to me. If he's not doing that, then we must be doing we must be doing what he wants us to do. I'm following my own path, my own designs. I'm doing what I, I want to do in my life. And since he hasn't struck me blind and called me in a different way, then I must be doing what God wants me to do. And that is so wrong. Because even, even St. Paul had prepared himself for Jesus. Even St. Paul was doing God's will. Even the rich young man that you're talking about who comes up to Jesus and wants to kind of justify himself, mm -hmm. what must I do to get to eternal life? And he, and, and he says, follow all the commands. And he says, I've done all that. I've done all that. But at least, without giving you the punchline on it, at least he came to Jesus 
And there's so many people out there who don't know the great joy of coming to Jesus, the great joy of listening to his voice, the great joy of saying, you know, I'm open to a different path than the path I've chosen. So uh, I, I, for me, I, I, I've discovered in my life that, that it's a wonderful life, that, that not just being a deacon, even before I was a deacon, it's a wonderful life to listen for God's voice, to be, uh, to be uh, a receptor of what he wants to speak into the world and then doing something about it. And I also know if we're not a receptor of what he wants to speak into the world and we're not willing to do anything about it, he's a gentle God and he will let us go on our merry way. Yeah, all right. And heaven forbid I get to go on my merry way because my merry way would not end in my eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. So what are we called to do? Uh, are, are we called to, uh, how, how do we do this? Are we, uh, am, 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 are we God's uh, right hand man? Do we, are we his uh, uh, hands and feet here? Or how, how are we supposed to do that? Well, obviously, uh, uh, we are, can do many things. But the first thing that everybody should do, uh, and that Jesus did, is he lifted his heart up to God, he turned to God and said a most powerful thing, how can I come close to you? And then he said, what would you have me do? And he says, I do nothing except what the Father has shown me to do. I do, I do nothing on my own. The Son of the Most High God, who could have turned stones into bread but decided not to, he decided to accept his identity as a Son of God and follow the will of God. What? What? He? Well, well, I don't want to do that, <laughs> you know. I don't want to do that. And what did he discover throughout his whole life and the, and the disciples discover and the apostles discover? That it's a magnificent life. It's a wonderful life. It's a life that with Jesus is a life in total turmoil. And yet you live with shalom peace, that peace that says in Philippians, beyond all understanding. And people go, I, I, I don't hear you, deacon. I don't hear you, Peter. That's ridiculous. That's crazy talk. You have no idea what's going on in my life. You don't know how I've been hurt. You don't know how, how, how God has abandoned me because I don't feel loved or, or, or a loved one is no longer with me. He's, they're up in heaven. I don't feel like I'm being sustained by God. And yet we are. And yet we are. But only if we lift our, oh, we can only tell that if we lift our hearts up to God. So how can love best be served? By starting with our identity as sons and daughters of God, by renewing that identity over and over again, by, by going up to heaven. You renewed your identity, plain as, a, plain as a nose on our faces, you renewed your identity in the, in the, in the story you told by doing what? You went to reconciliation. Well, yeah. well <laughs> uh, like I say, I think our Lord was after us. He's always after us. He, he wants us to, to do his will, right? And I think we're all, bap we're, we're all baptized. So by virtue of our baptism, we need to, need to follow. You know, you said something that, that struck me. You said peace. This is the peace we need to have. And how, how many times have we all thought, I need to do this, or I'm, I feel, whether, it's, whether you can articulate it and identify the Holy Spirit as the prompting, or conscience or whatever, and you don't do it, well, you also don't have peace. But if you follow God's prompting, you wind up having peace. A and you go from having superficial conversations, if you will, to substantive conversations, things that really would impact one's relationship with God, with, with their fellow uh, human beings, with their spouses, with their children, uh, right? We, when we actually bring our Lord into the conversation, uh, as you said a moment, uh, maybe you said it out in the hall, two or three are gathered, you know, Lord is there too, but we invite him in. It isn't like he, he's, he's uh, uh, imposing himself. We need to invite him in, and when we do, he can do the rest of the work. Well, I, I, I was struck by something I was uh, thinking about earlier. And, you know, our gospel this weekend is about Jesus Christ saying to, saying to, the, to the crowd, saying to everybody, you know, my, my sheep know me and I know them. They know my voice and they follow me. They, they, they listen for what I'm going to do and then, and then I go. 
And then we could say, well, okay, I'll just, I'll just be a sheep and, and I'll follow Jesus and then I won't have to do anything. Well, that's the sheep on the other side of the fence. Yeah. You know, right. that's the sheep that tries to straddle the fence. Jesus says, my sheep know me and I know them. And, and they know my voice and they follow where I'm going. That's where the rub comes in. You know, do I really want to know what Jesus wants me to do? Do I really want to, to, to reflect on how close I am to Jesus so that I can go closer like you did by going to reconciliation? Do I really want him to be so prevalent in my life that uh, I change course? that my course can be absolutely changed, that I'm willing to let him grab the rudder of my ship and, and, and take the course? And the answer is, that's hard to do. That's very hard to do. But it's done in inter- increments. We could do it all of a sudden, and, and, and if your heart's open to that and Jesus brings you, that's great. But for most of it, it's, it's, it's increments. And we, we listen to his voice and we test out, is that really God's voice? Is that what I'm really hearing? And he wants me to go do something. And it won't, won't be like, go climb a mountain if you can't climb a mountain. Or, or if he wants you to climb a mountain, he'll give you more strength than you ever had before. The neat thing about it is when you hear his voice and you follow him as a sheep and you follow him as a disciple... Ooh, yeah. that's a life like no other. That's a life like the shalom peace. That's a life that allows us to see an area of sin before we even get into it. That that's allows us to, to be that beacon for somebody else and that kind word, that, that, uh, that ability to go talk to the barber. And the barber goes home and he says, you know, I met this, I met this guy. I was and, and he was in a kind of vulnerable position because I had a, I had a scissors <laughs> to him. You know, I'm, I, and he was vulnerable enough to me to show me and to let me speak of Christ in the world. What if that's all you did is to let somebody else speak about Jesus in about the world? It. Yeah. Cool. He, he felt Christ that day, and you didn't have to do much. I, I, I think so. And we trust in, in the Lord. You were talking about the gospel for tomorrow, and uh, you were making a contrast, or I guess reiterating what our Lord made the contrast between the shepherd and the hired hand, right? The, the, the shepherd, uh, and w- the analogy, we're, we're the sheep, but why do we have such trust in the Lord? Because he literally will and did give up his life for us. But this hired hand, nah not going to happen. Well, it's the difference between a a priest and a politician. (laughs) I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, You know, but uh, but think about this. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to do something, so I'm going to wait for the Lord to make sure that I have to do it. No, no, no. Such great thing to be. You're chosen to be on his team. Just go ahead and put on the jersey. That's it. We'll talk about that when we get back. We will, and we will be back in just two minutes. You tell a friend to come and join us. We're talking about how to bring the love of Jesus Christ to every relationship we're in, and we're going to give you some good and practical examples. Hi, this is Matt Logeman with St. Joseph Radio with a great gift idea, a St. Benedict bracelet, a trendy accessory for men, women, and children that not only looks good on everyone's wrist, but is actually armor for the spiritual battlefield. This unique bracelet is handmade in Europe and contains 10 medals within the braided cord in the adult size and 7 medals in the children's size. On the front of each beautiful medal is St. Benedict holding a cross in his right hand, the object of his devotion. On the back of each medal is a cross. Surrounding the back of the medal and cross are the letters V. E-R-S-N-M-V-S-M-Q-L-I-V-B. In Latin reference, which translates, Be gone, Satan. Never tempt me with your vanities. What you offer me is evil. Drink the poison yourself. And finally, located at the top is the word Pax, which means peace. All bracelets come packaged with an informational card and the St. Benedict blessing, which your local priest can administer. This gift is for everyone you love and care about, including yourself. Available from St. Joseph Radio. Check the website at www.saintjosephradio.net. St. Joseph Catholic Radio is proud to announce the launch of SJEN TV, the St. Joseph Evangelization Network. SJEN TV is a premier online Catholic broadcasting network providing quality Catholic programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have programming such as live studio interviews, St. Joe's Java speaker presentations, current Catholic issues, and the Pro Life series. We're featuring the many talented speakers out of Orange County, California, and this Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri. 
Ministry, including Professor John Gresham, Father James Mason, Karen Nokemper, Rick Hollerick, Bill Federer, and many more. To review the program list, go to sjen.tv or on Roku, sjen.tv. All this programming is free, and we are welcoming sponsorship of new programs. Find out more at sjen.tv. <laughs> And we're back. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I'm your host, Peter Karutz, and we are here live in studio with Deacon Tom Burke. Deacon, we are talking about bringing the love of Jesus Christ to people, and uh, in the tough ways, in the easy ways, sometimes it's easy, just don't close the door. Sometimes it's hard, but what attitude should we have? I mean, what, what, are we really in charge of doing that or not? Well, the first, the, the first uh, thing that we talked about in how we started today was in prayer. In prayer. We, we lifted our hearts up to, up to him. If he's going to be our shepherd, if we're going to listen to his voice, then we have to choose what is his voice. And, of course, the hired hand that we talk about in our gospel, that hired hand doesn't care. He, that's the voice of the world trying to tell us to go off in different dra- directions. And, and we all know, I mean, if, if you've got any ears behind you at all, you know that if you've ever followed the, followed the voice of the world, you've discovered that you were lost. Yeah. At some point, you were just lost. We were lost. And I, I, I was going to make an announcement before we got into it. I, I want to talk about the ambassador and emissary in a, in a minute, but I, let me just squeeze this in. Uh, there is going to be a Midwest March for Life on Wednesday, May. May 1st, Wednesday, May 1st, on the south lawn of the, of the uh, Capitol in Jefferson City. Uh, this is really something we need to see and do. I was uh, just talking to someone who is a state senator, and they said, she said, look, you want to impress the people who are making laws? Show up. It's so impressive. There's going to be uh, a, a, a Melissa Oden. She's with the Abortion Survivors Network. Uh, Reagan Barklish, she's the national field director for Students for Life. It goes on and on. Many other people, Bridget Van Means with Thrive and um, Brandy Meeks with the Vitae Foundation. It goes on and on and on. So many, many pro-life people are going to be there. It is May 1st. That's a Wednesday in the middle of the week, Midwest March for Life. And this couldn't be more important today. There are petition takers, signature takers all over our uh, state. They're from out of state. So do not, do not sign these petitions. It is, uh, it is trying to uh, make abortion a constitutional amendment in this state. It would uh, eliminate all parental rights. It would eliminate all 52 laws that are on the books. It would uh, eliminate all, uh, it, it's like the major um, um, and, uh, exculpatory clause. You could never sue a, uh, a, a health professional who gives a, an abortion. You, you're totally vulnerable. It's a horrible, terrible, ugly thing. So please, refuse to sign, decline to sign, tell people not to sign. If you see somebody who's taking, taking uh, signatures, be careful, be very careful, and don't sign. And if you did sign, go to Missouri Right to Life, uh, their website, they'll tell you how to undo that signature. It's uh, it's crucial. May 1st, op, actually, is the deadline for this. So please, uh, please be aware of it. And pass that on. Pass that good news on, please, that we need to be careful. Well, just as a little segue off that, if you don't mind being a yeah, caboose please. to your train, I was at the... Uh, uh, I won't say it was a gas station, and I don't know whether they actually approved of the two young women who were out there having people sign petitions. And they were walking around with a clipboard, and it's and and, and they said, "Do you uh, would you like to sign this for uh, laws that help women women's rights?" Yeah, what could be better than that? Or women? Uh, no, it wasn't women's rights. It was women's, women's health, health. Health. And I'm like, oh. Do they know? And, and I walked up to the two ladies and I said, this is a tough job. I know it's a tough job. These yeah. people were not doing it. It's pretty clear they weren't doing it because they were passionately involved in the they were legislative process. out of town payees, yeah. And, and, Hired and, hand. And, and, they, and, and I, said, I said, this is something that, do you know what you're doing here? Do you know what we're talking about? Do you, and, and, and they were like, well, yeah, sort of. And I said to, to them, I said, I believe that children are valuable. And I believe that 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 life begins at conception. And just about every biologist that ever talked about it believes the same thing. And I, and I said, and I believe that your life is valuable and, that, and that, that it's important for you to think about what you're doing. And, and because I think so much of you and it's kind of a warm day, let me buy you a couple sodas. 
Good so for I went you. into the thing and bought him a couple of sodas, and so that I could carry that conversation on a little bit longer. So that's the point of what we're talking about. We have to put ourselves into a situation before God can change that situation. And we have to get our boots just a little bit muddy, that's okay, just so, so that Jesus can do the rest. There is so much that we think we have to do that, that actually God will do it all for us. And, and the thing that I, that I like to just sit on because it's such, a, such an important thing in my life is the doing, not the outcomes, it's the doing that causes us to, to be closer to God. Yeah. So, so the disciples, even when you hear in Acts of Disciples all these great things they did, I bet they goofed up too. Oh, I bet man. things didn't go as good as they thought. I bet just like some of our saints, they were starving. I bet like St. Francis, they weren't wearing shoes. I think all kinds of things happened to them. But because they were so Christ, close to Christ, they had a life that a life that we can dream of and we can dream ourselves into as we speak with Jesus. So, so what does that look like? Uh, you were what asking that me that. Like? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but before you go on that, you brought the, the love of Jesus Christ to these people. That, that is what we have to do in every circumstance, even if they're taking these petitions. You did it. You showed them how much you care about them. Crucial. Well, Stephen, St. Stephen, we had his, his uh, death in our, our first reading earlier this week. The la his last words are, into your hands I commend my spirit. But his second to the last sentence was, forgive them. Yeah. Just right. like Jesus said. There you go. And these people are taking his life. So, so what, what do we become? Do we, right. do, we, do we go from spectator? Do we go from spectator to, to, uh, to street evangelist in two seconds? Maybe. But most of the time, no. We kind of go from, from emissary to uh, ambassador. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Emissary to ambassador. Emissary to ambassador. Okay. An emissary brings something from the government, say the president, to, a, to another country and says, here's, my, here's what the, the, the government in the previous country and my home country is trying to tell you. Is I'm, I'm bringing you a, a, a message, uh, maybe an, uh, an invitation or an offering. And it's really wonderful to be an emissary for Christ. An emissary for Christ is somebody who, who is constantly willing to speak Jesus into the world, to bring his message into the world. People with a charism of teaching have that particular uh, have that particular grace that their words become efficacious. Great preachers are like that. Uh, but each one of us can be that emissary. Each one of us can say, I'll speak Jesus. I'll just ask you if you're a man of faith. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then it was like an explosion, a cacophony of, of a profession of, a, of another person's faith and belief in God. And he got that from God at the same time. It wasn't sitting in a, a dark corner of his heart. He was willing to share it. I love that. So each one of us can be an emissary and we can bring that simple message of God's love. Remember, we're talking about that. We can bring that simple message of God's love. Now, people are going to look at you funny. When something goes, if, if something's going wrong in their life, when they're not happy, mm -hmm. this is not right. Right. I'm not happy. Well, you come up to them and go, God loves you. Yeah. That's not going to get you very far. Yeah. But if you come up to them and enter into their space and enter, in, enter into where they're at to bring his message of love by your presence, just by your presence in the barber chair, that makes you an emissary. And if you're an emissary, you're, you're, on, you're on your way to being an ambassador. So ambassador is a little bit different. Ambassador is different. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm God's representative in some respect. I am, um, um, we, there's a, we know what ambassadors are here. They, they represent, if you will, the, uh, the message of the country that they're delivering, uh, they're from, and then delivering it to their, to their uh, constituency, whatever that might be. If I'm the ambassador to Mexico, well, I'm bringing the words from the United States with some authority to the people who I'm delivering it to. Yeah, that's great. You're absolutely spot on because because an emissary may bring a message, like a messenger, but an ambassador brings it with authority. 
And, it, and, and when Paul wrote that in 2 Corinthians 5, when he, when he wrote that, he was listening to what God wanted to tell people, right? Like we're hearing in our gospel passage. He was listening, and then he was speaking in authority. And he says, we're all ambassadors for Christ. Right before that, right before that in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, it's talking about how much we've been saved, how, how, how God's mercy is so great. And that relates back to us being an Easter people. You know, we're an Easter people. That means that, that, that I'm, I, I'm here, but I'm not really here. I'm already, uh, as it says in Ephesians 2, I'm, in Jesus Christ, I'm already seated in heaven. So my destiny is heaven. I'm on, I'm, on a, I'm on a really bad vacation from heaven right now, okay? Mm. I, I got the, I, I, I'm trying to think of a movie where it was, where it was, where it was vacation or something like that with Chevy Chase. But oh, yeah. having said that, I'm, I'm here on earth trying to gather as many people as I can on this vacation to be with me in heaven for all eternity. And if I don't bring him forward as an emissary, then then uh, they won't know about him. But if I don't act in my authority as a disciple, as a baptized disciple of Christ, that's what Paul's talking about. Act in your authority. What do you think that authority is, Peter? Uh, well, to carry his message. But that's a messenger, right? Uh, that's a messenger. Yeah. Yeah, see, so, so what I'm getting at, and I'm sorry about the uh, going around the merry ground, is that at the time that Paul wrote this, uh, 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 an ambassador could start a war. Oh, really? Oh, they wow. came with absolute, the 100% authority of the king. They, they bit, literally could do treaties, bind the whole country to, to, to all kinds of things because they had that authority. We, as, as disciples, as sons and daughters of God, have that authority, and we can exercise that authority in the world. Yeah, and maybe the, the consequences, too. I, you're, you're making me think, you know, as someone who is uh, uh, obviously Catholic. So, for example, Deacon, I don't think anybody would ask you, well, are you a Catholic, are you Jewish? No, I mean, they know you're a Catholic, and, and to some extent, your representation and your behavior and your actions will also reflect upon it. Your example will have an, a, a, a profound uh, influence on people. They see you doing good, it's an example. It leaves an impression. They see you doing bad, it will be equally a diminished. You said an ambassador could start a war. Yeah, you could drive someone away or you could try and bring them closer. And, and yet we often talk about uh, uh, let my example show Christ in the world. And that's only part way. Okay. Let me just say that's only part way. Uh, if, if my example, if I'm a good guy and I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't make children cry or kick dogs and pay, I pay my taxes and I go to work like I should and, and I don't talk bad about my boss as many times as I'd like to. Is that, is that what we're talking about here today? Is that, is that being a, a disciple of Christ? Is that all we have to do? No, we, we need to exercise the virtuous pieces of that. Not, it, the ne negatives, too. We run away, or not run away, but we distance ourselves from the negative and we encourage the, the positives. Uh, I, I think uh, one of the best ways to fight evil is to exercise virtue, and uh, I, and and that is what we can do. We we can. And I'm trying to delay talking about individual circumstances for another minute or two, but let's not. Right. So how do we deal with those individual circumstances? We we act in a virtuous fashion, and that the virtue will actually negate the evil that is somehow surrounding us. It isn't that we do nothing, it's that we do something, and that something has to be grounded in virtue. 
And if we just do a little something, that's what's so extraordinary I've discovered in, in the recent years. If we do something just a little bit extraordinary, a little bit out of our comfort zone, God rushes in with the Holy Spirit. I think so. He, he makes a way where there isn't a way. He, the Blessed Mother unties knots. These are not things that are just somebody's platitude. It actually happens. I see it all the time, where, where all you have to do, all you have to do is speak Jesus. Jesus into the world and bring him with you because he really wants to go with you. He really wants you to be his wingman and he wants to be your wingman. And if and if you find yourself in a difficult situation and you bring Jesus in, then you bring the grace of God in. And the grace of God is the power, the power for us to respond to his call to be sons and daughters of God. It, I know I'm making it real simple and it's not. I know that when there's conflicts in people's families, uh, and they say, well, well, wait a second, there's a conflict in my family, and you're telling me that somehow I need to insert myself in there without even knowing what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, where, wh- how, what it's going to mean for me, and, and how they're going to react, and I just can't do that. I understand. I understand fully. But that's a place for grace. That's a place for Jesus to act. That's a place for us to say, I can't do it. I will do it with you, Jesus. And then and then just be amazed. And then we move on it. We move on it. Yeah, I, I, this is St. Joseph Radio Presents coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. I'm your host, Peter Karutz. We're with Deacon Tom Burke, and we're talking about bringing the love of Jesus Christ in every aspect of our lives. You said something, and I don't know if you were sitting here reading my mind, but it's it's in the difficult circumstances that make it tough. So or, um, there's a, a great articulate philosopher uh, out there. His name is uh, Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson says, Mike does, Tyson. Does he have, does he have chicken? I, I, does he have chicken? I, I don't know. Okay, I, don't. I don't know. But it, it, he, he, uh, uh, Tyson's he, food? Is that I, what? The, no, that no, what? I yeah. think I'm talking about a different Mike Tyson. Okay, I, I okay. think I am. A- anyway, what he says is everybody's got a plan, and then they get in the ring with me. In other words, when you get hit by Mike Tyson, all those plans kind of go out the window. But as you were saying, Deacon, I think, it, to use the boxing metaphor, we got to be able to take a punch with a smile, like it didn't even phase us, right? So it's these difficult circumstances that we get put in, and we have to answer it with joy. I think joy is one of the great gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And joy in a joyful circumstance is no big deal. Joy in the difficult circumstances is what really is impressive. And that's what comes from and that's what comes from God. We think we have to do it all ourselves. We think we think it's all up to us and it and it's not. Let me let me kind of we don't have a whole lot of time, so I want to give you an image if you yes. don't mind. And I, I just read this in a book recently. I won't say the name of the book because I can't remember and I haven't finished it, so I don't want to endorse it. But it's written by a Franciscan and I love Franciscans. And uh, he uses uh, he did not come up with this, but he uses the image of a sword. And he says, our prayer life, our prayer life is like that, that unrefined sword. And, and the, the blacksmith continually puts it into the fire. And, and it gets all, it, it gets hot. And, well, that's the Holy Spirit. So, so he's saying that when we uh, go to prayer, and, we, and prayer just means, I want to talk to you, God, because things aren't working out too good, and you need to step it up and come through for me. That's a good prayer. Or, God, I thank you so much, which is even a better prayer. But having said that, when we go into prayer, when we go into prayer, then uh, uh, that's getting into the, into the heat. And then what happens? Well, the blacksmith pulls it out of the heat and then starts beat, pounding beating on it, on it yeah. beating on it, beating on it, beating on it. Well, that's the world. That's what happens to us. We go in our prayer life in the world, and then it beats on us and beats on us. And what do we have to do? We go back into prayer. We go back into the heat. We go back into the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes alive in us, then then we're pulled back out of it. And then we're beat on and beat on and beat on. But all of a sudden, it looks more like a sword than it looked like a club. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then we go back into our prayer life. We continue to go back into our prayer life and we continue to give thanks to God and then we, he, we're pulled out into the world 
we're always pulled out in the world. We're always pulled out by our, by our wounds. We're always pulled out by our deficiencies and our failures. And we're beat on and beat on and beat on. And we get sharper and sharper and sharper. And we're always a tool for God. And, and then God says, ah, I'm looking at this blade and I can see myself in it. It's so shiny. It's so sharp. It's like my son. So you ask how can uh, you ask for some practical things? Yes. So I'm going to give you a, a practical thing before we leave. Right. And and if you can remember this, uh, if if you can remember this, uh, five three one. Five pr- three one. Five three one are prime numbers, aren't they? Uh huh. And I came up with this based on that what the book was doing because the book guy the guy in the book was great. He was great. He says come up with five things that you're thankful for, five things that you want help and mercy for, and five things that you want to take Jesus into the next in the next few hours of your day. Uh, I, I that's that fifteen things is just that's uh, I, it's it's beyond me at my stage in life. But this isn't. Throughout the day, come up with five things that you that Jesus gave me this in prayer. Come up with five things that you're thankful or you want to praise God for. If we did it right now, you could come up with five in a heartbeat. I know you could, Peter. And then I want you to come up with three things or three people you want to intercede for, Mm -hmm. either in an emotional way, a spiritual way, or a material way. Okay? It could be one person who needs emotional, spiritual, and, and material, but that's the three emotional, spiritual, or material, and that's three people or one person who needs the three or any combination. You do what you want. And if you're not quite sure who you should be interceding for, who you who you're supposed to ask? Ask God. Right. Yeah. He'll tell He'll you. He'll tell you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then you get to the one. Yeah. And, what's, and what do you think the one is? I don't know. Well, it's what you want, okay? Oh, okay? Whatever you want, whatever is the most efficacious for you, for your salvation. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to happen. This is, I need difficulty in my, with my kids. I'm difficulty with my decision. I need clarity in my life. I need courage in my life. I need, I need some knowledge and wisdom in my life, these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you see, it's five, then it's three things you're interceding for, and there's one thing that you want. Now let's be candid. For a lot of my life, I've reversed this. <laughs> I, get it. I, I, I I say five things that I want. Right. I skip the intercession part because people need to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. And then I figure that one thing I'm gonna praise God for. And that and that one thing I'm gonna praise God for is something that he gave me of the five, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And that's so much living in the world. As an Easter people, let's get back to that. As an Easter people, do you feel out there when you're listening to this, do you feel like you're an Easter person? That's what that's what St. Augustine said in a famous homily right after Easter. He said, he said, We are an Easter people. That means that we have been saved. So most of this stuff is just just crud, mm-hmm. just stuff that, that, that we have to pass through, but we will pass through. We, have to, we don't have to overcome. We endure it with the love of Christ, and we bring that gift of endurance, that gift of love into other people's when we just ask the simple question, how can love be best served? And then let him direct us. That's very practical. So if we're going to bring the love of Jesus Christ to every circumstance we're in, we ask the question, how can love be best served? And that can be different in many, many different circumstances. And if we get pounded, you know, if, if the hammer or Tyson, whatever, if you get pounded, we have to know that our suffering is efficacious, that that suffering is, as you, as you did the analogy, is molding us into the, into the tool that God needs to best serve him. And be and be uh, be aware and beware that the evil one will turn to you and say, "Your suffering is because God doesn't love you. He doesn't think about you. He doesn't contemplate you. He doesn't want you as a part of His life, and He doesn't care to be a part of your life because of your suffering." Pray hard against that temptation. Pray hard against that uh, that distorted. It's not even a reality. I can't even call it a reality. It's, an, it's the opposite of a reality. But if you're suffering, think a la Job, right? Job never abandoned God. Job never gave up, right? But if you're suffering, God is with you as he was with Job. And he will make this into good. 
So if you're suffering, if you're being attacked, know that this is your fire, if you will, that God is using to, to take, turn that suffering into something very, very efficacious for him. And we start with listening for his voice and be willing to be that ambassador, taking him into the world with the authority of God. And then we will see hearts opened. We'll see people healed, stepping out of wheelchair, blind people see. I've seen all that, but that's for another story. I hope we hear about it soon, miracles in our world. So that's the music we need to go. Please tell your friends and your enemies to come and join us next week. I think we have Sean Miller, who will be incredible. What a great teacher he is. But for now, go out and bring the love of Jesus Christ to everyone you meet and do it in the way that they really need, just like our Lord did. God bless. You've been listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to join us in our evangelization efforts, you can order a copy of today's broadcast or any of our past programs by visiting us on our website, stjosephradio.net. That's S-A-I-N-T, josephradio.net. Or call us, 636-447-6000. It's all at your fingertips to help us evangelize the world, bringing the good news of Christ to everyone you meet and change one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and support. Until next time, may God bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of St. Joseph Radio Presents.